embedded rendezvous points and VLC multicasting using IPv6. Let's begin. Our objective for you and I in this micro nugget is simple, is to identify how we can train this network to dynamically learn who their rendezvous point is without using BSR and without statically configuring that information on every single router. One mechanism of doing that is by embedding the IP address of the rendezvous point inside of a multicast group address. To embed the rendezvous point IP address inside of a group address, we first of all need to plan on what the rendezvous point address is going to be. So let's choose R2 that we want him and his loopback address of this guy right here to go ahead and be the rendezvous point IP address. Now we are going to statically configure R2, the rendezvous point. We need to tell him that he's in charge of being the rendezvous point, but we're not going to specifically tell R1, R3, or R4. We'll let them figure out who the rendezvous point is based on the multicast group address that we create. So with that in mind, that we're gonna use this rendezvous point address, let's take a look at how we can stuff that into a multicast group address. We start off with FF, and the FF represents that, hey, this is a multicast group. This seven right there, that's saying, hey, guess what? It's not just a normal multicast group, but it has the embedded information about the actual rendezvous point inside of this multicast group. The details about the last character here, this eight, represents the scope of this multicast content. Is it site-wide or organization-wide, or is it global in scope? And then we come to this next section of bits, and this right here, this R, represents the last character of the rendezvous point IP address. Now, one of the requirements to stuff this IPv6 address inside of another is that the rendezvous point address, the host portion, which is the interface ID, the last 64 bits, it needs to be mostly zeros. In this case, that's true, and the last character is number two. So we take that last character, follow me here, that last character goes right in that position. So in our case, because the last character is a two for the rendezvous point, it goes right here. Now you might be thinking, well, Keith, we're gonna need a lot more information about the rendezvous point than just the last character of its IPv6 address. We also need to know what network it's on. That's a good point. Let's take a look at these next two sections. These next two characters, which represent eight more bits, is the prefix length bits. And in the prefix length, we have these two characters. With those two characters, we're going to indicate how much of the network we're going to tell about. So let's say that this rendezvous point is on a slash 64-bit network, 2001 DB8 colon zero, those 64 bits. We wanna represent that right here. Now I know that 40 to the decimal mind doesn't look like 64. However, it's in hexadecimal. So if this is a value of 16 each, and this is the ones position, that'd be 16 times four plus zero ones, which would be 64. So this 40 right here is just telling inside of the multicast group, you're about to receive 64 bits of information regarding the network address of the rendezvous point. Well, if you told it that you were gonna give it 64 bits, guess what? That's what the next 64 bits need to be. The next four groups represent the network address of the rendezvous point, which in this case is gonna be 2001 DB8 Now I put that zero there instead of the double colon because I wanted to expressly indicate that that was the 64 bits. I even color coded it for you. So that's this part right here. And these last 32 bits, that's going to represent our individual multicast group ID. And with 32 bits available, we can create millions of different multicast groups, all of which are using the embedded RP address inside of them. Once we've identified that this is the multicast group we wanna use, we're gonna use a group of zero, six, seven, eight, three as the last 32 bits. Then we simply need to tell R2, we configure him saying you are the rendezvous point. And then we allow R1, R3 and R4 and everybody else, if they see the multicast group of this, they will automatically know who that rendezvous point is. They'll extract it and use R2 as a rendezvous point. To actually test the multicast, I statically configured R2 to let it know that it's a rendezvous point but we haven't told the rest of the network. And these friends that I have here with me, this is a Windows XP box, and he's on this network right here, which is the A subnet, which is just off to the left of R1. I've also got this Windows 8 machine, and this Windows 8 machine is on the F subnet, which is just off of the Gig 3.0 interface down at the bottom of our network, hanging off of R3. 
We're going to make the XP box a VLC multicast server. So we'll simply launch VLC, bring it open. I'm using a lot of the defaults. This is version 2.05 if you want to replicate this. And we're going to go ahead and simply create a media server. So we'll go to media. I want to stream my content. I'm going to grab a file, just a, a MP4 file that I want to send. And then I'm going to specify that I want to go ahead and stream it right here. Now I'm going to take a lot of the defaults. It's specifying the file that I just chose. I'm going to click on next. It's asking me, how do I want to send this? I'm going to say, I want to use the RTP MPEG transport stream. Select that, click on add, and then I need to put the address of where I want to send that to. And this address I'm putting in is that multicast embedded group address that we just looked at. I'm also going to specify port 5004 and just be aware of that because on the client, I need to be registered for that group and also paying attention once that stream comes to port 5004. I'm also going to tell it I don't want to do any active transcoding. I want to send it as it is. We simply click on next. And the other thing that is really important is to specify the time to live. A time to live, if we set it to one, the first router who gets it is going to say, oh, time to live is over and I'm going to drop you. So we're going to increase the time to live. I'm going to specify 10, which would be plenty enough to get through the four routers that are sitting between the subnet A devices and the subnet F devices. And then we'll simply click on stream and it's off to the races. We're now pumping out this content inside of the network. In fact, if we take a look at this icon right here, it's showing that my network is sending, 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 and that's a very, very good sign. The second half of this is to go to the Windows 8 machine, which is down on network F, subnet F, and tell it to join this multicast group. We'll use the VLC player there as well. It'll use a multicast listener discovery report to tell R3, it wants that group. That message will be propagated through the multicast network, and then the content should flow down to the Windows 8 machine. So over on the Windows 8 machine, let's go ahead and bring up VLC. And we're going to simply go to media, and I'm going to say, I want to open a network stream. It says, OK, what do you want to listen to? And I'm going to go ahead and put in the details regarding what I want to listen to. And the details are this. We're going to say RTP colon whack whack and at symbol and then in brackets because I have an IPv6 address that uses colons I'm going to put the entire IPv6 multicast group address there then a close the bracket and then a colon and then the port 5004 and then we'll click on play and there's the content streaming through so it should loop and the music's on I'm going to mute it so I don't have to listen to that but every 10 or 12 seconds, it's going to loop. It's going to send it again and go through this network. In this micro nugget, we've taken a look at one way of training our network devices on who the rendezvous point is, and that is through embedding the rendezvous points address inside of a multicast group address. I hope this information has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.